All right, hey YouTube, in this video we're gonna be doing a look at Hogwarts Legacy at 4K native, as well as 4K with upscalers such as FSR and XESS and DLSS, those sort of things. And we're gonna look at how the game runs on a Radeon RX 7900 XTX, equipped with a Ryzen 9 7950X and 64 gigabytes of system RAM. So this graphics card has 24 gigabytes of VRAM, which means it is well suited to handle a title like this that may or may not be properly optimized depending on uh, what your opinion is of this game so just to kind of dive right into it let's take a look at the settings so right now we're running this at 4k native with no upscaler this game does have a good amount of upscalers i might add so it's really nice you can run fsr2 intel xcss we'll look at those in a minute fsr1 and nvidia nis so all of them are there uh, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, there will be an additional uh, NVIDIA DLSS option, um, which I showed in my uh, RTX 3080 Ti uh, video. So, just to show here, the GPU is an, an RX 7900 XTX. If we look at the settings, everything is set to Ultra. I will add that there is currently, at time of filming, there is a bug in the game if you have a 7900 XT or XTX AMD Radeon card. Uh, the plants in the distance will show up as white instead of green and as you approach them then they'll turn green that is tied to the material quality setting if as a workaround you're going to want to set that to low uh, to fix that problem so if we go back out here just to kind of show that real quick for those that are probably looking at like why are all the plants white so you can see right now everything looks normal in the distance right there but if I go ahead and turn that back to anything beyond low so let's just set it to ultra, for example. Now you can see all those plants are like white. Um, as we approach them, they will turn green. So this is a bug that the developers need to fix. I don't know if the AMD driver team needs to fix this because it seems like the 6000 series AMD cards do not have this problem. They are on an older driver fork though. So that might be part of it. Um, so this tells me the developers didn't test these GPUs with this driver prior to launch. Um, so let's go ahead and leave that on low so it's not going to distract us the entire time. Um, from what I can tell, material quality doesn't really impact the frame rate at all. Um, a lot of these don't really do a whole lot except for maybe fog and uh, the shadow. Shadow, texture, and fog are probably the two most... Uh, and the view distance as well. So when you're outside, the view distance will heavily impact the performance depending on your GPU's capabilities. And we will look at RT reflections later on, but for now we're just going to leave it like this. Uh, so we're going to look at how native, native resolution performs in this title. So you can see we're holding, we're hovering right around like 60. So we're going to go into Hogsmeade where a lot of NPCs are. In Hogsmeade, the game will become very CPU heavy because it has to render all these NPCs on the field. So you can see at native resolution we're holding just around 60 FPS. So if we go inside, just to kind of show you guys what happens when you go indoors, so this would be representative of being inside Hogwarts for example. So indoors the FPS you know goes up a little bit um, but it really depends on where you are. This game hasn't really called a lot of the things that are outside this building, so which is why the FPS is down to like 70, because in Hogwarts it would be typically higher than that, around like 80. So that kind of shows what it's like indoors. If you go back outside, now you can see the performance is just roughly around 60 with this GPU at native 4K. So that's kind of the look at how it runs at native. So let's go ahead and now try upscalers. So let's start with FSR2. The nice thing about this game is the, the game actually tells you the rendering resolution that you've selected based off of which upscaling quality level you've chosen. So in this case, it's defaulting to quality. There are three additional ones. So quality is mapped to 1440p internally. So what this means is that with FSR2 quality, it renders the game at 1440p and then it upscales it to 4K. If we drop this down to balanced, you'll see now the rendering resolution is lower than 1440p. And if we go down to performance, it becomes 
1080p effectively now being upscaled all the way to 4k but let's look at quality and see what that looks like so this is with fsr quality so this is effectively 1440p as the internal rendered resolution uh, and then upscaled using amd's fsr2 technology to 4k so you can see the performance, the FPS is a lot higher uh, in general compared to how it was okay, with I come. full native resolution. So if you're somebody who wants FPS quite a bit higher than just 60 FPS, then you're probably going to want to run this with FSR2. And this applies to basically any GPU that I've come across so far, right, like native resolution Unless you're pairing up this graphics card with a 1440p monitor, then you can probably get the exact same performance because this is effectively 1440p performance, uh, just upscaled to 4K. So that's going to be the FSR2 settings. Let's take a look real quick at Intel's XESS-based upscaler. So you can run Intel XESS. So again, it's the exact same resolution for XESS quality. That's 1440p upscaled to 4k so this one looks very similar i mean i i can't really tell the difference between the different upscalers and how they look uh, the only way to really tell is to take still screenshots and then just kind of like zoom in and look at how things look but uh from what i can tell regardless of which one you choose they're going to result in similar performance see so we're so we're around, around 90 fps is what i would say for XESS and FSR2 quality, they both result in like a 90 FPS experience, somewhere around there, whereas native on this graphics card is around 60 FPS. In the worst case scenario, that being Hogsmeade. So, let's take a look real quick at uh, RT. Let's see what that looks like. So if we enable RT, let's set this to Ultra. So, Ray Trace Reflections on and Ultra. So this is the one that actually makes a noticeable difference. The other two don't really seem like they do much for my own testing. So round... Okay, so you lose... You lose basically the almost all the performance that you gained when you were running it at the uh, FSR2 or XESS. So, but you can see, so actually, let's turn off the uh, upscaler. Let's turn off XESS and see what this looks like with RT reflections at full native 4K resolution. Okay, so you can see now it's sub 60. The RT impacts the performance by a lot. Let's see what happens because the CPU, from what I've seen, the CPU is a big factor in terms of your RT performance. If you have an older CPU or a lower end CPU, uh, your performance will tank dramatically depending on what hardware you're using. But you can see here, we've lost a bit of performance. You know, we're running this with the RT reflection set to ultra and we're dipping below 60 in Hogsmeade. But again, that seems to be very CPU dependent. Um, let's go out in the field real quick and see what happens with this RT shadows or RT see how it looks with the RT out in the field so you can see it's yeah it's still you know like around 50 now so ray traced reflections uh, are interesting in this game like i i do notice I, I do notice a difference with the light but i don't really think that it it i, I don't think it's a must-have right like none of these settings these rt settings seem like they do a whole lot in terms of making the game experience significantly better let's look at this water here so this is ray trace reflections see the water right there let me try to get a better angle and then now let's turn it off Let's turn this off and then see what it looks like. That same puddle. 
See, so again, this is what it looks like with it off without the RT. And it's still, I mean, it looks like the light source. You can still see the sun getting reflected up there. So they're just using like a, I don't know what you call it. I forget what they call it. It's like a, uh, a light map or something. I forget what it's called, the technical term. Um, but see, it seems like the effect, this is with RT off and it looks like this. And with RT on, it doesn't really seem like it's doing a whole lot. So I guess the bottom line is, for the most part, for most people that are probably going to have a lower end GPU than what's shown here, you're probably going to be good with just leaving RT off. It doesn't really seem like it does anything. If you want to turn it on, then you're probably going to have to use some sort of upscaler like AMD's FSR2. Uh, if you have something like a GTX 1080 Ti, for example. So, anyway, hope you guys found this video useful, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.